What's up guys? I'm student Dr. Thompson. I'm just getting ready to start my second year of medical school and I had some thoughts on shadowing a doctor. Stick around for a three-part series. This is part one where I talk about what is shadowing, why is shadowing important, and how to find good shadowing experiences. Okay guys, so what is shadowing? Obviously, the word shadowing, you're, you're following a doctor around as if you were her shadow. And you may be following the doctor around in the clinic, the doctor's office, um, a hospital setting, maybe in a surgery room, maybe on a house call. Wherever the doctor practices medicine, that's where you're going to be when you shadow a particular doctor. Why is shadowing important? First of all, Shadowing is important to gain clinical exposure. You want to know whether or not being a doctor is really right for you. And medical schools want to know that you know that too. And so the, it may be a requirement for your application to a certain medical school. Some schools require a certain number of hours of shadowing. So um, it's important because it may be a requirement and it gives you clinical exposure. It's also important because when I talk in part three, I'm going to talk about how to get a letter of recommendation from a shadowing experience. So you need letters of recommendation from physicians as you apply to medical school, and this is one of the best ways to get them. And then the last reason why I have down that it's important to shadow is because it gives you insight into a potential career that you could become. You know, you may shadow an OBGYN and say, that's eh, not for me. You may turn around and shadow a urologist and say, I want to spend a lot of time and energy focusing on that. So getting a wide variety of shadowing experiences is also good. Keep in mind that medical schools want to see that you've shadowed a primary care doctor and that you've shadowed one extensively, like more than just a couple hours. The reason is because there's a shortage in primary care physicians. Now, if your medical school doesn't have the size in producing primary care doctors, it may not be an issue at all. Okay, so third and, and last, how do you find a good shadowing experience? It kind of seems hard or daunting to, to think about how you're going to find doctors, unless you know one personally, how are you going to find doctors to shadow? Um, so in order of what the, the ways I think you should look for shadowing experiences, first, look in your friends and family. I personally don't have any family members that I know of that are doctors. But randomly, I said at the dinner table at my in-laws, I need to shadow a radiologist. And my father-in-law said, I've got a cousin who's a radiologist. Little did I know about this cousin. He made one phone call. I got a shadowing experience with this guy, asked him for a letter of recommendation to which he said yes. When you shadow doctors that are friends or family, uh, they take on the role of a mentor a lot faster than someone who you have to build a relationship with with from zero, if that makes sense. And similar to friends and family, the second way to find a shadowing experience is through a personal doctor. Maybe your pediatrician, maybe your, uh, your mother's doctor, your father's doctor. Go with uh, people who may have some connection to your family or to you in, in some way. And again, they take on the role of a mentor a lot faster than a random person that you don't know. Though doctors are, are generally very helpful and generally they want to teach you and encourage you to become a doctor, um, it kind of is an icebreaker when there's a connection. Um, okay, so the third way to find shadowing experiences is through your school resources. A lot of times a student from your school has shadowed a doctor. The doctor may have agreed with the pre-med office um, to be on a list. And with that list, you can contact doctors a lot easier than, say, a cold call and um, get your foot in the door for a shadowing experience. And fourth is with volunteering. Okay, uh, a lot of places maybe don't allow shadowing. For example, I wanted to shadow a pediatric um, orthopedic surgeon. I called up Shriners Children's Hospital in Salt Lake City, Utah, and they said, oh, we don't allow shadowing, but we are looking for volunteers. And I jumped on that volunteer opportunity. Twelve months later, as I was wrapping that up, uh, my supervisor said, 
you've actually met the requirement. If you want to do some shadowing before you leave, you can. And I shadowed three different surgeons there, and those were, I mean, pure personal statement material experiences, like top-notch in, in, in an operating room uh, in a pediatric setting. So it was just an amazing opportunity. The last way to find a shadowing experience that I, that I thought of was cold calling. And in fact, I actually relied upon that method um, more than I should have, where I wanted to shadow uh, ophthalmologists. I opened up a phone book, I Googled, I came up with a list of numbers to call, and I just started making random phone calls. And to my surprise, um, they were very receptive. It is a lot harder, you know, to get up the nerves to make a phone call like that. But these people were receptive, and randomly I called Dr. Alan Crandall's office. I didn't know who that was. He turned out to be uh, one of the most famous ophthalmologists in the world, and he let me come and shadow him. And so just an amazing experience from cold calling. I'm, I'm not saying um, you should cold call. I'm just saying those opportunities may be just as amazing as opportunities from friends and family. Okay, so those were my, uh, you know, what is shadowing, why is shadowing important, and find good shadowing experiences. That wraps up part one. Stick around for part two, where I talk about what to wear, what to expect, and what to bring with you when you go shadowing. Thanks for watching.